Hi, I'm Monica Whitmer and this is CK. He is an eight-year-old thoroughbred Arabian Connemara cross gelding. CK comes to us as a return to our program after being uh, sold and away. There were some difficulties with the other rider and so we're now assessing him to see what exactly was wrong that required him to be returned. Um, CK's future is probably going to be as an eventing horse. Um, he's a nice mover and uh, likes to jump. So we're going to work on his dressage, see if he's uh, sane and sound, and then we'll proceed with his training. Uh, right now I've let him walk around the arena at least once each way. When a horse uh, comes out of the stall, they need at minimum seven minutes of walking to allow their uh, synovial fluid to thicken up and be more cushioning. And it takes seven minutes for a healthy young horse. With older horses, they may need even longer low impact work before their joints are ready to take harder work. CK's reached that seven minute mark at this point and I'm checking him out just a little bit. I have flexed him a little right with my fingers and my leg to make sure he's listening and he moved right off my leg. So we're going to do a little bit of walk eintwicken which is um, a shoulder in exercise. I'll come right at the camera here and so I put him into shoulder in posture where his left front foot's in front of his right hind and then I'm going to allow him to go in two straight steps and then we step out maintaining the shoulder in angle and then we go in straight again so he learns to step away from my right leg and then step straight so that he's not falling out through his shoulder and then we step out out and then it's straight straight in in on a diagonal and out out and you can see that that stepping out is a little bit challenging for him. He fusses with his head, he clanks his mouth a bit. And that tells me he's a little stiff in his left shoulder and I actually felt what I call a shoulder pop there. Now we're going to reverse and do a bit of that on the other direction. And I'm gonna switch my whip. I'm using a short whip today just because with a green horse, and he may act like one, it is better to correct the shoulder with a whip. So now again, I'm going to do a circle to let him get organized for a shoulder in left. I want to have a nice bend from his ears to his tail. It is not a neck in, it is a shoulder in. The bend is not determined what happens in front of you. The bend is really what happens from the withers to the tail. So now we have some angle. And then we're going to go in, in, and out, out, out. Good. And then in, in, and out, out, out. And in, in. Always maintaining that slight 20 to 30 degree angle to the rail. There. Out, out, out. And in, in, and out, out out and then we'll finish with forward straight steps and he feels soft and supple and obedient enough to move up to trot. I'm going to lift my chest, stretch my heels, close my calves. So you can see he has a nice springy gait. He's a little tight through his back. He's looking around. There. So we're going to put him on a nice big 20 meter circle here. And again, I want the bend to be through his whole body, not just in his neck. So the displacement for a 20 meter circle is only three quarters of an inch. If you do the math, you know how to measure an arc, and using an average length horse, his pole will only be three quarters of an inch deviated inward from the center of his withers. It's not much bend. Too often people over bend a horse. 
Now we're going to spiral in and that will require a gradual increasing of that bend. I'm generating that increased bend by putting weight down in my inside seat bone and heel and looking a little more left. I'm not pulling my left rein. Left rein is only for flexion. There, now we're going to move him out in a leg yield. So my left leg is pushing him into my right hand. He's crossing over front and back. And that differentiates a shoulder in from a leg yield. And we'll repeat. We're going to leg or er, spiral in, left heel down, turn my chest a little more left, bring him into a somewhere between 10 and 15 meters. Again, with a horse that's either green or been out of work, you don't want to be too demanding. And now we're going to leg yield him out to make sure that left hind leg is crossing well over in front of his right hind leg. Now we'll release with forward and even permit him a chance to stretch forward, down and out perhaps. There, good boy. Good. Now we'll change. I want to bend him through the corner, ride him nice and straight. And instead of riding to the corner letter, I'm going to ride to R or S or V and P so that he has more time to organize his body with some straight before he has to bend for the corner. Now our dressage court is under repair for footing. So right now the rails are pulled out and the letters are away. But I know my arena well enough to where we can work here. We've had some very warm and cold nights and it will challenge a horse in their respiration a little bit. And it seems like CK's just a little challenged here getting his lungs clear. So we've spiraled in. Now we're gonna leg yield, spiral out. You wanna take at least two circuits around. And here he's not answering my leg. So I gave him just a light tap to ask him to try a little harder. There. And the best thing then to do is to do it in stair steps. So we're going to spiral in again. I weight my inside heel. I look a little more right. You can see he doesn't want to bend right as easily. So we would say that right is his stiff side. Left is his hollow side. And now I'm going to ask him to leg yield out just two steps. And then I'll rest on the 12 meter circle. Then I'm going to ask him to go out two more steps and I'll rest on the 14 meter circle. And then I'll ask him to go out two more steps. And now we're on about 16 meters. And that way he has time to reorganize and I reward him for making two good step efforts, which last spiral out, he didn't want to give me at all. Good boy. And a little stroke of the neck, a little praise. Horses and dogs are the only species really that will work for praise and not just cookies. Treat training is wonderful. It's not practical when you're riding a horse. And fortunately, our selection process of domestication has made it so that horses and dogs like to hear good boy and they're happy with that. If we also reward them with a stroke. So here we're trying now to be a little more greedy, if you will. I'm gonna ask him to do four leg yield steps before a rest. There, and again, four leg yield steps before I let him hold the arc of whatever circles there. And coming into the camera, we'll go out just a little more. There, this is a very good exercise for a horse that doesn't like to bend. Even though leg yield is not a bending exercise, it is a shoulder displacing exercise. When a horse is hollow to the left, bent right. Their shoulders generally are slumped to the right. So you can see that his inherent way of going is this. So when I leg yield him, I literally am picking up this right shoulder and stepping him over on his left shoulder. And that makes him more centered in the way he carries himself. 
If a horse does not leg yield well, it is good to teach them a turn on the forehand to really emphasize, yes, that they should step off your leg and across and over. There, good boy, good boy. And again, that was his difficult side. We'll go past the camera, try to give a little space. Now I'm flexing him left, bringing my left leg back just an inch. You don't want to exaggerate. And we're going to ask him to step across. And he was much more willing that way. So that again affirms that he is hollow left, stiff right. And that just means that he tends to exist with the spine resting in the cradle between their front legs. They do not have a fixed collarbone like we do. So their spine can lay to one side or the other. Often a horse who's really confirmed in being slumped over on their right shoulder will have a uh, too long a toe and a steep angle on the right front and the left front will be tending towards clubbiness. And it really has to do with what's going up higher in the body and dressage can actually help cure that. It isn't the message in the dressage, it is the massage in the dressage, to quote Deb Bennett, Dr. Deb Bennett. All right, so we're gonna send him forward. We've done some lateral work now, so we have improved his flexibility left and right. We're now gonna work on his longitudinal flexibility, moving him up to trot again. And one way to work on that is just transitions. As we ask him to step down and to walk, if he does it accurately, he tucks his hindquarters over, under, and as he pushes forward again, he pushes out so that we bend him like a bow. We can also do that with transitions in the gait. So we're gonna ask him to collect a little. This horse cannot do true collection, so we're gonna shorten his steps, increase the arch in his body up and down. There, and then push him out again. And again, his training, even though he's been gone from here for about a year, he remembers most of it. There, 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 and forward. And a change of bend onto his more stiff side. Again, I have to ask him to move his shoulders more to the left. There. And it helps if I change my diagonal. There. And again, we're going to bring him down to a smaller trot. This is not true collection. We're just asking him to move in the direction of collection. Collection is not something that happens in a day. And again, because this is his difficult side, you can see him fussing. And then we send him forward and try to maintain that hind leg stepping under more actively as we take the bigger steps. Walter Zettel calls this a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. And with some horses who really don't know how to get their hind end under, he says you get down to a dirty little trot. It is not a dressage movement. It is a schooling trot designed to teach the horse to sit behind. And the minute they make that effort, right there he changed, we reward them and let them spring forward again. Same as the spiral in, spiral out. We don't insist on more, more, more. We don't get greedy. We reward the effort. Again, to quote somebody I have a great deal of respect for, Mark Rashid, he says, reward the try, right? They don't have to succeed, they just have to try. So I'm asking CK again to use his right hind leg more under him, flexing his joints of not just his hock, but his stifle and his hip. And I'm sitting deeper. I'm waiting for that moment where you feel a spring come into their step. And it isn't pulling. You can see my hands are not closing back. The reins actually are pretty soft. It is with my seat, my core. And he's getting very stiff because he's having a hard time with this. It's okay for his head to go up, in my opinion, because sometimes that's the only way they figure out how to get their butt to go down. So we'll take him a little above, so long as he's contemplating the right efforts. 
there we're almost thinking there right there hopefully the video will show a change in the articulation of his hind leg joints and again I let him out I praise him give him a stroke and tell him he made a good effort there and we'll confirm it the old show me it was skill and not luck so I'm gonna post smaller smaller sit I'm gonna sit on that hind leg and I'll see how smart his little brain is that he knows what it was that made me happy and got him out of the puzzle he's, yep he's trying he's thinking Taps of the whip are just to tell him where to think. Think about this hind leg. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Still waiting, the trot, trot is very small. This is that dirty little trot. And I'm just sitting on him, adding leg, waiting for him to articulate behind. He tried to push forward, he said no by stretching up, closing a finger. So again, this is not a dressage trot. This is a schooling movement to ask him to change his hind leg. Come on. And it's a lot to ask for a horse who's been stiff behind, not bending his joints. And I may have gotten greedy asking him for more, but we'll try to help him find it. I'm actually leg yielding him a little. And now I'm asking for shoulder in. All these things to make the hind leg move in a different posture so that hopefully he can figure out how to push with it. Right now he's bracing. I can feel his shoulders dropping away from me. I keep doing an opening right rein because he doesn't want to bend this way. So you'll see my hand go wide and then come back to normal. I know, I know, I know. I'm hoping he'll get there so that I don't have to give up and send him out. That's the next option. It's just to start over. There, 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 there. Good boy. And you can see the trot he comes away with is rounder, more energetic. The head has stopped sticking itself up in the air. He's lifted the base of his neck instead of diving it away. We're going to let him have a forward trip around the ring. You can only do so much compressed work before you need to open the joints back up. So that is work on longitudinal suppleness from the ears to the tail arching the back up and down. And I'm going to settle him into walk. Got a little above the bit there, but not surprising. He's tired on his right hind. You might think, well, that wasn't that much riding. No, but this is a horse who's a little out of shape and hasn't been doing this work. And it would be just like if I went to the gym and signed up for step aerobics, having not done it for a long time, I would be dead in 15 minutes. The next time I went, I might make 18 minutes. The next time I might make 25 minutes. Same with the horse. Just because you don't think it's hard doesn't mean the horse doesn't think it's hard work. There, so we're letting him stretch forward down and out in the walk. If they don't just automatically stretch down you can close your fist on one rein until they give and then you release that and then you close your fist on the other rein he's looking in, under the trees to see if there's monsters there <laughs> out here there be monsters there. there again remember he's new back here he doesn't know this arena that well so there there's a nice free walk starting to articulate from the top of his shoulder body mover not a leg mover all right because we're running out of light we're going to gather him back up and do just a tiny bit of canter work again this is more an assessment ride say where we start and then we'll find out where we go so we're going to pick up a nice working trot there. And now my outside leg back, my left hip forward, sit, push, swing. There, a little above the bit. Again, the right hind leg initiates the left lead canter, and his right hind leg is his weak one. Doesn't wanna, doesn't wanna flex under and bend. Actually, weak may be the incorrect term. It's his stiff, straight one. 
There's a lot of reasons a horse can be stiff on one side and hollow on the other. Ah, ah. So there, he just fell out of balance. Let me ask again. There you go. There you go. And you can see the drawback to carrying the short whip was that to effectively use it in that situation, I had to reach back and release my hand. Um, so now that I know that he's not totally wiggly green and d difficult, I can go to a long whip. But for today, we'll work with what we have. There. Uh-uh, very stiff, looking up, got distracted, paying attention to what everyone else is doing. Again, left hip forward, right leg back, push, squeeze. Better, more responsive, depart. Something I can reward, a little scratch on his withers. There. And the canter is the best exercise to work on longitudinal suppleness, but not today. That again would be getting greedy. So we'll settle for it. Ah, ah, ah. He heard a sound and spooked a little, but recovered. Oh, it's the dogs playing outside the rain. So everyone's entitled to be surprised when they hear or see something right behind them. And that was a small reaction. Brrr. So to trot, I step in my outside heel, very little hands, use my voice. We may not be able to use our voice in a dressage competition. We can certainly use it in school. And again, I'm gonna give him a chance to stretch a little, giving the reins down little by little. Squeeze the left rein, squeeze the right rein. Left rein, squeeze the right rein. There, good, good, that a boy. And to stretch down that low, again requires a great deal of lift in the spine which means the hind end has to come under and that's tough for him right now we'll walk just a moment canter the other lead and be happy with a good short schooling session again don't get greedy when you work a horse reward the try find what they can do reasonably and only when it seems so super easy to you up it. You uh, want to work to the limit, not over the limit. And uh, really, dressage done well and classically should look like nothing's happening. It should just look like it all just appeared. And uh, should not be a struggle. I know that we now watch a lot of riders really struggle with low white hands, heavily applied curb bits strong spurring, but that's not really classic. That is getting trapped in the make him do it. I am of the school of set him up and allow him to give it to you. And that requires a little more patience, takes a little more time. You won't have a nine-year-old Grand Prix horse, but on the other hand, you will have a sound 30-year-old horse. And for me, that's a worth off trade rather climb a little slower and stay up there longer. So again, we're gonna move up to trot, close calves. Good, sit the first couple beats. Create a nice right bend. Again, we already know this is a side he doesn't like to bend to, but it's gonna be his easy to depart canter because his left hind gets to push into it. His left hind, see how nice and smooth that came. His left hind was much more willing to step under and initiate the canter. Ah. However, going from a bend to straight, he lost his balance. There. There. So, ah. and you can see he is a little tired. So, my resolution is to sit a little taller, stay in my driving seat, just a little. There, the canter is bounding. Good. We'll do a couple of intentional downwards and upwards. Brrr. Canter is one of the best for working longitudinal uh, suppleness. Outside uh, leg back. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And again, coming to trot just by stepping in my left heel. Oh, that was almost too much. I exaggerated it for the camera. And he uh, almost came to whoa. Swing my hip, 
There. 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 Ah, ah, see, yeah, he still has trouble realigning his body off the bend to a straight line. My mistake, because I didn't push it. So I know he's going to try to break. So I'm going to sit a little taller. I'm going to drive, push, push, belly button out, even thinking a lengthen just to overcome that error. And again, always nice when they've gotten something right, your rewards, a good boy. And then try it one more time to confirm that they know it. So again, I'm going to sit taller, ride almost for a lengthen, there, and then he doesn't break. Good. And now, step to the left stirrup, softly. Let him stretch forward, down and out. There, there. He's actually getting a little strong, and you would think, I thought she said he was getting tired. His trot's faster. He's falling on his nose. So gravity is sucking him down and forward. There, he's happy to stretch though. There, good, yes, yes, without rooting. He's allowed to stretch without taking the reins away from me. There, there. So a tired in the hindquarters horse will stop carrying behind. They'll start to fall down in front and they will feel faster and rushier. So the solution isn't work the more. Solution is stop earlier next time and let the hindquarters come up to meet the strength that you need. Good boy, Seeks. So, we have a good basic foundation to start from. Um, he's not strong behind, but he obviously remembers his schooling. Um, he was obedient. He was not upset working out here alone. These are some of the things we had heard were a problem. Um, he. Uh, didn't overreact to spooking at the dogs. He looked at the trees a little, but not overly. So all in all, a good assessment ride, a good place to begin. And now, just as I started with at least seven minutes of walk, he needs at least five to 10 minutes of walk at the end, both to clean out any residue in his muscles. We want to keep the blood flowing and also to uh, come to peace. If you've worked hard with a horse, you don't want to just work them and then slam bam, thank you ma'am. You want to reward them and have a little time with them where you can scratch their withers, tell them they did a good job. If at the end of a work session you can't drop your reins like this, have the horse's head come down and out and their ears relaxed and swiveling, then you have missed the very basic tenet of dressage, which is rhythm, relaxation, regularity. If you do not have relaxation, you can't do anything else. So if you have forced things on your horse so much that he is tense at the end of the session, you've made an error and you need to go back and find what you can do to have your horse more relaxed. So there was our first ride. We'll hopefully follow it up with more video of CK.